What's up, Flunky Force? It's Game Flunky. Today's No Bullshit Podcast, we'll be discussing some new game trailers, some new games coming out, and just talking about some random bullshit as always. So stick around. Let's have some fun. I wonder if any of these work. Nope. I don't even know if they worked. Anyway, uh, so let's start off with Holy Shit E3 was a blast. There's a bunch of new games out there I'm really looking forward for, looking forward to. Uh, Battlefront 2, definitely can't wait to play that. Um, little, I mean, Battlefront 2 really stuck out the most to me. Everybody and their mother kept showcasing it. Um, so it was pretty much the big thing that we kept talking about. Um, far as my neck of the woods. But, uh, I, I, I was thrown, I was really, really, really thrown back by it. Uh, we had a bunch of other games. There's a list right here. Hold on, I'll show you. I'll read them off to you. See if any of these just ring a bell with you guys. Uh, okay, so we got Far Cry 5, which is starting a whole bunch of controversy. Uh, we've got the new Assassin's Creed Origins. Let's see what we got. More items. Let's see what we got. We got. All right, so here we go. Oh, I got a list of them. Holy shit! So this was at, okay. List of confirmed E3 2017 games. So we've got thir 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim for Vita, PS4, 2064 Raid Only Memories. I'm going to see if any of these stick out. Like, well, hold on. Alright, I'm going to see some of these. Wait, hold on. It's PC games. What's, what do we got? PC. I'm looking for something that sticks out. But yeah, there's a lot of them that I was really thrown back. Uh, you had Anthem, Bioware's new IP that just came out. I don't know what the hell we're doing with that one, but I'm looking forward to that a lot. Um, let's see what else we got. There's like a long list of Black Desert Online is coming to Xbox One as well now, which I'm people pretty stoked about that. Uh, Call of Cthulhu coming to PS4, Xbox One, to PS <laughs> PC. That's another one that stuck out to me. I, I really want to see what that's about. Uh, the new Call of Duty coming out too as well. I know everybody's really stoked about that one. Um, I'm actually glad that they're finally going back to boots on the ground and they're going back to World War Two. I know people are gonna love that. Let's see what else we got. Crackdown 3, there's a big one I'm looking forward to. I saw the, I saw what they were talking about, like, if you connect to the Microsoft Cloud or whatever it is, you can do all kinds of crazy shit with blowing up stuff within the world of Crackdown 3, so that's something to look forward to, to see how it works out on the PC and the Xbox One. Uh, Dark and Light is another one I'm looking forward to. Ooh, Days Gone for PS4. That right there will make people buy a PS4. Days Gone, that zombie open world game. Holy crap, I'll watch this, some gameplay footage of that. The developers were talking to the guys at um, E3, and I really was like over the moon with that game. That's that's a really fun game. I can't wait to see it. Um, another one that I saw, State of Decay 2. That's another game I'm looking forward to. Uh, let's see. The new Dissidia Final Fantasy is coming out. Ethereum, no. Everybody's got Golf Fable Fortune. Uh, Far Cry 5. Oh my god. Oh, the clusterfuck. I, I don't know if that's still... I've heard a rumor that that game's getting shut down now because of all the people getting pissed off about its um, backstory. That was dumb as shit. Fire Emblem Warrior for the Nintendo 3DS. I can't wait to see that one. That's going to be fun. Oh, that's for 3DS as well? Oh, shit. I thought it'd be for Switch. All right. What else? Oh, Fortnite. There's another one I can't wait to play. That's like a open world base builder sim kind of game. Really fun. I can't wait to play that. I saw some footage of that game. That game's really going to be dope as fuck. Any game that brings up new concepts to the genre or to the culture of gaming, I love. Uh, what else you got? Uh, God of, the new God of War. I like that one. That looked cool. Um, what else is there? I heard they're releasing a new DLC for Breath of the Wild. So stick tuned to that. That's going to be awesome. Um, Lawbreakers. That's another cool one. They got a lot of games in there. Holy shit. You hear about so many of the popular ones, you want, the popular ones, you never really see the, oh, oh Metro Exodus, oh, that's going to be good, that's for PC as well, I might get that for, and do a series on that, uh, Metroid Prime 4 for Switch, Metroid Samus Return for 3DS, people like lost their mind for Metroid Prime 4, which is good, it's good, I like the old Metroids, for, I played one on GameCube, I love the shit out of it, um, Middle Earth Shadow of War, that's another good one, Monster Hunter World, uh, what else is there? Oh. Uh, what else? Mystic Melee. I don't see anything else that sticks out right now. Nino Cuny 2 is going to be another good one. Need for Speed Payback. Eh. Osiris New Dawn is coming out to Xbox One as well. Shit. Nice. Osiris New Dawn is a, um, 
It's kind of literally, I, I hear it all the time, and it pisses me off, but I actually say it in this one. It's literally what um, New, Man's, New Man's Sky, No Man's Sky should have been. It's kind of a open world, box of world where you can break shit down, build up your base camp, things like that, and travel from one planet to another. But it looks beautifully well rendered, graphically astounding. I mean, Xbox One, you probably wouldn't need Xbox One to run that shit. It, it's crazy. Path of Exile coming to, Path of, I can't talk today. Path of Exile coming to Xbox One, too. Here's another one. I look at this list. It's crazy. You all hear the rumor, or uh, that I'm gonna call it rumor until I actually see what it is. With the new quote unquote Pokemon RPG is a whole new IP for Game Freaks. That's be cool. Check that out. I really want a Pokemon game that essentially is the same kind of functionality as Sun and Moon was, but it's like completely 3D rendered. You can walk through it, kind of like Breath of the Wild. I want like something like big open world. You can traverse and check out the scenery things like that and and i would love it so you can you i could love it if it's more like um dungeon pokemon mystery dungeon whatever where you can use pokemon to affect the environment and stuff like that that'd be cool all right we got red dead redemption 2 river city knights of justice wow that sounds cool that's for 3ds though what else we got there robot craft infinity for xbox one rocket league for switch People are really getting crazy about that one. Sea of Thieves, that's another one. That's a good, a good one, I can't wait. Uh, Secret Legend. Oh, God. Sinran Kagura, the, be the Peach Beach Flash. Good God. Shadow Colossus for PS4. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Skyrim for Switch Edition. Oh, they're still coming out with that. Okay. Splatoon 2 for Switch 2. The new Spider-Man game coming out for PS4. Holy shit. Stay Decay, baby. Stay Decay 2 for Xbox One and PC. Evil Within, Evil, The Evil Within 2. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC. Switch, yep. Yeah, so, wait, we you ain't getting that? Oh shit, I gotta piss some people off. SCOM 2, War of the Chosen. What? Hold on. I love XCOM 2. Expand okay, yeah, I know what that is. Never mind. When is that coming out? So XCOM 2 War of the Chosen is expansion to XCOM 2. The expansion features new enemies, the titular Chosen, who are elites among the alien forces. They include the Long Range Hunter, the Stealth Assassin, and the Warlock. To help fight them, three new resistant factions have also been introduced. The Reapers, the Half-Alien Skirmishes, half of the skirmishers in the mysterious Templars. The game also introduces the lost mutated humans who invade your battles in droves, attacking everyone they see. Holy crap. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to that expansion, though. I love XCOM. I love Firaxis. I love the games they do. So, that's pretty much all in all what's going to be seen in the coming year. Uh, E3. So, that's pretty cool. I like what I saw. Um, Days Gone is a definite one for me. I want to get if I had a PS4. Um, yeah. I know... Stay the K2 I want to get. Uh, another one would be God of War. Because it's based in the Norse mythology now. Which, that is so dope as shit. I, I don't know how he went from where he was to where he is. I don't know how Kratos did that. Kratos, whatever his name is. But that's still boss ass. Um, yeah, it's still pretty cool though. Uh, so what are you guys looking forward to? Is there any game sticking out? Is there anything you kind of wish that came back? Scalebound, by the way, speaking of comeback, Scalebound apparently is in... Purgatory is no longer canceled. It's in purgatory. While Microsoft decides what they want to do with it, I guess, or the development company or whoever. Um, so as of right now, it's still in, up in the air. So it's no longer in cancellation. It, they, I think they're in, like... I, if, if I had to put a word to it, I'm de um, debating whether they want to do with it. Um, so yeah. I hope... If, if we go through all this drama to get it to come to full release, I hope it is worth it. I really do. I got a bad feeling though, but I'm gonna keep my mouth shut because I don't know. Because the concept is that apparently, from how they're advertising it, is you're kind of locking this off. Like, because there's a multiplayer to it, but it's weird. This it's 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 weird. I'm not gonna say that because I don't know too much about it before it got canceled. But it was a beautiful game. You can fuse your dragon like far as like you can. Like, get, get dragon armor from your dragon. Your dragon can evolve differently and look different. So, it's really cool. So, not everyone will have the same dragons and st stuff. Like, same powers and stuff like that. So, that's neat. Uh, Metro Exodus is another one I want to get. I love Metro series. I wish I finished them. 
before I got rid of my PS4. I still got it right here. Metro Redux, which I think includes both the games. Yeah, Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light. Yeah, basically, Metro is a game where, like, I forgot pretty much. This is like a nuclear wasteland in Russia, and you're trying to survive this harsh wasteland. And be, pretty much humans have moved into the metro system of Russia to survive, or at least in Russia, to survive. And you, you kind of hunker down. That's pretty much where, where civilization's at. And probably civilization gets pushed further and further back into the metro system because due to hostile creatures and roving um, raiders, stuff like that. It's pretty neat. It's, really, it's got some really creepy psychedelic moments to it, too. That really mess and work with your head, but it, far for an interesting game that I really did not give any time of day to, it really turned out to be a really cool game. The series as well, I really loved. It. I I don't think I, I actually matter of fact I didn't beat I didn't even beat the first one. That's how that's how soon I got rid of my PS4, which sucks because I got into YouTube and stuff like that, so I never really had a chance to finish it. But I liked it when I did play it, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, I don't know. E3 was really. As far as me, I, I really would root for any one console and you know PC and stuff like that because I am a PC user. But I was generally happy with what I saw. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what the heck Microsoft doing with the Xbox though, because now we got the Xbox Scorpio and the Xbox One X, Xbox One Xbox. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, I, I mean, I hope for somebody was trying to tell me was apparently when Scorpio gets released, the yeah, Scorpio will be the end of all consoles as far as Microsoft because now you can turn in and upgrade it. Well, if I remember correctly, people were telling me about the PS4 when it was PS4 originally talked about being released. That people were like, well, you don't have to get rid of it. You just got to go take it into GameStop and say, I want to upgrade or buy an upgrade for it. Like you would do with your hard drives. You want to change the hard, drives, the hard drive size. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. If it's legit and that's really going to happen, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see how this works out. Um, it's neat that they're giving players the ability to do that. Pick and choose your upgrades. That should probably be a really smart business move on Microsoft part. They have a base model. That way you can make your money back. But then, if they... I'm assuming Microsoft ain't making their own parts. If that's how they're going with this. I'm assuming this and like they would never make their own parts. So you're buying from other um, companies, stuff like that. So it, it's, it's an interesting concept. But I haven't seen a console to this day ever do that. Um... I, I wouldn't, I don't see how something like that would flop. That is just my opinion. I, I mean, I really don't. I mean, like, it just, it just, like, it seems like a great moneymaker, right? Because now you pretty much provided the incentive for people to buy your console, and then you provide the ability for them to upgrade the console, so they're never going to get rid of it. I would assume, you know what, though? In the long run, how would they make their money? I mean, think about it. If 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 PS4 kept pumping out PS4s and kept enticing people to buy new PS4s, right? And Sony did that. Or PlayStation did that. And then, eventually, the market... I mean, because apparently the reason why Microsoft leaving is that they're not making that much money off of Microsoft... Or off of, excuse me, off of Xbox One consoles. Which I don't know how true that is, if that's pretty much... If that's true or not. But it, I, I, I don't know. I dropped a cap. I don't know how true that is. I would assume. I haven't already heard anything concrete. I've heard that I know they want to leave the console race, but. Which is ironic, because apparently now Atari's going to jump back into this and want to make their own consoles. I, I, just, I don't know what the fuck everyone's doing now. I don't know what the hell. Atari's like, alright, Microsoft's out. I can fill those shoes. I'm like, <laughs> nah, fam, pump your brakes. But. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see an um, Atari console. Uh, I mean, Atari got the shit kicked out of it for years after... I mean, not, I mean, they get shit kicked out of it. It just died off with the rest of those old-style consoles because it just... They were inefficient. My, Nintendo just wiped them off the face of the planet. Um, so, it'd be neat. Do I think it'll work as far as Atari? I don't know. It's just like the Xbox uh, Scorpio being upgradable over a period of time. I, I This concept new to me because I just... It, it would think you would think it'd work. But you never know, right? Oh, and the next box has a new complete backwards compatibility now. Now you can put your old disc in the Xbox One, and it'll work. I think it's just an upgrade or an update you have to get through the cloud or whatever, and update your Xbox One, and you're allowed to play games. If you have the disc of old games, then you can play it, which I thought was a really cool upgrade. I was like, damn, nice. I don't know, Sony, they're stepping it up. You guys are saying the reason why you didn't want to do it for PlayStation was kind of a dumb idea. 
But now Xbox has got pretty much a better console than what you currently have on the market coming out soon. And it's going to be backwards, completely backwards compatible. So, I don't know. Unless Sony gets something on their sleeve. I know the pros coming out and shit like that. So, or whatever they're doing in the future. So, it'd be interesting. To say the least. I still want to switch though. Like, I want to switch like yesterday. I think they're really awesome. The idea of just to be able to go on the go with that switch and just have fun. It's just, just freaking awesome to me. Um, oh, I watched the ending to the Power Rangers film the other day. The new one that came out, I really, I only watched like a clip of the end, and I was really taken back by it. I loved it a lot. I'm a huge Power Ranger nerd. Big, big Power Ranger nerd, so. I was really looking forward to that, and I, I enjoyed the ending. The, <laughs> the like, the 15, 20 minutes I watched the last bits, and I, now that I've seen that, I'm gonna watch the whole movie. Because I'm really hesitant, and I think it's like anything else. When you grew up on something, you have this picture and this idea of what you want it to look like, and you, now that you're older, and I'm almost 30, so, when I saw it, I was a little hesitant. I was like, shit, watch this suck or not be the way I remembered it when I was a kid because I was a kid. It looked freaking awesome. It's like when I watched the old Star Wars films. I know they came out way, way before I was born, but I watched them as a child and I was like, oh crap, these look cool. And then I got older, I'm like, oh my god, why did I think this is awesome? Graphically, I mean, I love the story and stuff, and I love, I'm a nerd, I love Star Wars. But, and then you look at like J.J. Abrams' Star Wars, and you're like, oh my god, that's what you want. And sometimes. You know, you don't get that. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were a lot of big hang-ups in that last 15 minutes I had with the whole entire film. Like, spoilers here, Goldar, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know what was that, 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 that what, what the fuck was Goldar? Somebody please tell me what Goldar was. Like, was, I just, I, I don't know. Goldar is, that was horrible, man. That was, like, the worst thing. And then there was, um... Brian Cranston, he plays Ordon, which I, I just, when he, again, spoilers, when he, um, wait a minute, spoilers coming, so if you want to turn this off, but when he revived Billy the Blue Ranger, that was just, it broke, it like, just not broke my heart, but like, got to me, because I love, that's Ordon. And, just that Ordon, Ordon always had a, Ordon always stood up for the, that's the whole part of Ordon when he recruited kids, he stood up for the. So it's stood up for the small guy. And not small guy. He stood up for the kids that didn't have a voice. That's what I always thought about Zordon. He always recruited the kids who just needed a helping hand. That's all. Power Rangers are always some kind of misfit, some weird way. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, it depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy the movie, at least the 15 minutes that I watched. So I watched the rest of the day. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I love the E3. I had a great time. I really want to switch. Uh, I might be getting a PS4 soon, hopefully. I don't know. I still need a TV. So there's some that bullshit to deal with. But yeah, this is it. This is a No Bullshit Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Game Flunky signing off. Let me know in the comments below things you look forward to in E3. Things you can't wait to see in the near future. Alright. Talk to you later.